I said, no, Jesus said, whatever I tell you in secret, shout on the house top. <laughs> Christianity is not courtism. Any unshareable truth is falsehood. And uh, here is a man going to about 70. And uh, I was listening to what he was saying to me. One, two, three, four. I said, stop. That's delusion. So the word of God is the platform for proving the validity of a vision. God's word. Anything contrary to the truth is fallacy. Anything contrary to the truth. Because the scriptures cannot be broken. So any vision, any revelation that is not founded in scriptures, granted in scriptures, is falsehood. Anyone. Because we can do nothing against the truth. Second Corinthians 13, 8. Second Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 8. But for the truth. So the truth is the platform for proving the source of any vision or revelation. If it's contrary to the truth, throw it to the trash. It will never stand. This man was so sure that he had from God, but I could puncture that by my little understanding of the truth. Watch it. That's a stranger there. When the Lord showed me the mystery of the anointing oil, it was very unpopular. And a number of people rose and fought it, but that didn't do nothing to me. I kept teaching it until everybody saw it. And everybody that was fighting it, now is a beneficiary of that truth. There is no truth of scriptures that is private The Bible is an open book. Somebody should pick that up. The Bible is an open book. So any revelation that is unshareable, any vision that cannot be shared, is falsehood. Now, there are practical parameters in scriptures, and I'll look at five of them. One, Every divine direction or vision must be accompanied with peace. Psalms 8, 85 and verse 8. He said, I will hear what the Lord will speak. For the Lord will speak peace unto his people. God always speaks peace. Anything that does not come along with peace the peace that passes all understanding, the peace that is not temporal, that comes and goes, the peace that is settled, it becomes questionable. Psalm 85, verse 8. The Lord will speak peace unto his people. Now, in Isaiah chapter 48, and verse 17 and 18, it says, Thus said the Lord, I am the Lord that teacheth thee to profit and leadeth thee in the way that thou shouldest go. Oh, that Israel had hearkened to my voice, verse 18. Their peace will have been like a river and their righteousness as the waves of the sea. So when God is leading, your peace flows like a river. Amen. <laughs> Your peace flows like a river. A river is never scared of mountains. He has his way around it. When the Lord is the one sending you signals for advancement, it is accompanied with peace like a river. Peace like a river. Peace like a river. Number two, scriptural parameter for appraising the source of any vision or revelation is called joy unspeakable. 
What do I call it? Joy, Joy unspeakable. Thy words were found, and I did eat them, and thy words became the joy and rejoicing of my heart. Joy and rejoicing. That's what makes it joy unspeakable. Jeremiah chapter 15 and verse 16. Thy words were found. So when a word comes from the Lord, it always accompanied with joy and rejoicing. Joy and rejoicing. First Peter 1 8 says, It is joy unspeakable, which is full of glory. Joy unspeakable, full of glory. Joy unspeakable, full of glory. Someone asked me many years ago, Brother David, do you ever have problems? I said, Maybe it came, I didn't know. <laughs> joy unspeakable, full of glory. Joy, if it is a word from the Lord, you know, in Psalm 89, verse 14, it said, Blessed are they, verse 15, sorry, Psalm 89, verse 15, Blessed are they that hear the joyful sound. They shall walk, O Lord, in the light of thy covenant. So the voice from heaven is always a joyful sound. Say with me, joyful sound. Yeah. Now, it's so important. Uh, it, it must be accompanied with joy. So anybody you see depressed say God spoke to him, it's not God who spoke to him. God has been speaking to me all my life and uh, uh, every word from the Lord sparks off one strange joy inside you. Amen. One, one unusual joy inside you. When I was taken to the place where um, uh, headquarters church is in 1996, January, uh, I said, no, 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 this can't be no, no. This is off anything I've ever read on church growth. Of the city, of the town, in an obscure place. No. And then we got there. Let's give God thanks. And God said, this is the place. And immediately all my feelings was overturned. Just the voice that came from heaven. Ah, as if I lost my geography. Immediately everything turned. Every word from the Lord, no matter how odd the commandment may be, it comes along with joy. It's always accompanied with joy. I mean, I knew from that same moment, I said, God just said, this is the place. I mean, and everything inside me turned. This is the place. All my argument and all my geographical confusions, everything vanished. This is the place. It came with such heavy joy, irresistible joy. Unstoppable joy. You know, thou will show me the part of life, for in thy presence is fullness of joy. So every part of life erupts with joy, unusual joy, fullness of joy. We are told that shortly in Psalm 16, verse 11. So watch out. If it doesn't come with peace like a river, which... Um, Paul called peace that passes all knowledge. <laughs> Inexplainable peace. Sleeping in the midst of the storm. I mean, if it doesn't come with joy unspeakable, check it, the source <laughs> is questionable. The source is questionable. How many are getting it right now? Yeah. Amen. The source is questionable. Number three, Whatever comes from the Lord comes with liberty of spirit. Liberty of spirit. Ask chapter 20 and verse 22. Paul said, I go bound in the spirit unto Jerusalem, not knowing what will happen unto me. There was tension on his spirit. 